Welcome to PNP, the Partners in Positivity podcast, where Ashling Burnett and myself, Sarah Harty, warriors of EBP, SBP, DHBs, that's emotionally bulletproof, spiritually bulletproof, divine human beings, aim to wake up and shake up the nation through positivity, humor, and shared wisdom. Guys, welcome, and I just want to say it's episode 67, and it is about time that we recognize some of you for leaving such beautiful reviews for us. Um, thanks for sharing what the podcast has actually done for you, and that can help people who want to listen, and it also helps us as a podcast. So if you want to leave a review, you can. I'm just going to share some of the lovely ones that we received now. Gillian McGann said, love this podcast, fills my soul and brightens my day. Give it a listen. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to talk, said a very optimistic conversation for the morning. And another amazing one from Rachel Kelly. Listening to the latest installment from Sarah and Ashling transported me back home and I felt as if I was sitting at the kitchen table with them with a cup of tea. I adore how they share parts of people's stories and it's so lovely to listen to. I am lucky enough to have received one of the bears Anne talks about in this podcast. I forgot I had it with me and I took it out last night. So comforting. Such a beautiful listen. Can't wait to hear more. Thanks so much everyone. Woohoo! Thanks everyone. They are gorgeous reviews and so grateful that you got so much from it. So today we have a special guest with us and her name is Ava Hennessy. We actually had Ava on the podcast episode 31. So if you do want to know more about her background and what she's up to in the world, please go back and listen. We're so grateful to have Ava on the show today and we're going to discuss three things. One is going to be for us what it means to be emotionally bulletproof two we're going to chat about how many emotions there are and three we're going to chat about the emotional scale maybe you've heard about it before maybe it happened but we hope you get something great from this so ladies let's get straight into it emotionally bulletproof have you heard of the term before what does it mean for you mm, like i have but i don't know i don't think there is like a definition is there I wouldn't say so anyway. Yeah. Like for me, I mm -hmm. think being emotionally bulletproof is just actually being aware of your emotions because we all have them. And I feel like sometimes it's, um, you know, someone gets really angry or really upset or like really triggered by something. Maybe they're just not really aware of like what's going on. So I feel like it's okay to have emotions and feel them. Yeah. And I think when you're aware of them and you know why you're feeling them, then you're emotionally bulletproof. That's so nice. You're not reactive, you know. Yeah. But it's totally normal to do that as well. Like, we all have our moments where we do react. <laughs> yeah. But I always had this thing in my head when I was younger that I didn't like um, people getting the better of me. Mm -hmm. So I used to push everything down. You know, like, if someone did something to annoy me, I wouldn't say it. Mm -hmm. And it would build up and build up and build up. And now I'm just at a point where if I'm not happy with something or if something is upsetting me, I'll just say it. Mm -hmm. And then it's easier to resolve it then. That's brilliant. Yeah, use your voice. Like, yeah. yeah. Say how you're feeling. Yeah, what emotions you're yeah, having. Yeah, and I feel like mm -hmm. um, a lot of Irish people don't like direct conversations. It's mm -hmm. like we're all so afraid of upsetting each other that mm -hmm. sometimes people think when you're being direct, you're being argumentative, but you're actually not. You're just saying the truth, yeah. whether that person meant to upset you or not. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I always just say to my friends, like, if I do something that ever annoys you or upset, like, just yeah. tell me, because I don't want to do that. Mm. So... That's yeah. nice, actually, that you're able mm -hmm. to say that to your friends. Mm -hmm. Let you know, like... Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really important. For me, being emotionally bulletproof, it means so much to me now doing the podcast and all the work I've done with my own emotions over my lifetime. But I was just thinking back when I asked you that question to when did I begin to understand what emotions were. And, you know, what comes to mind is when people say, like, oh, be the bigger person. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah. But we kind of intuitively or innately know what that means and sometimes mm -hmm. we do it and sometimes we don't but definitely it's the whole like respond or react you know are you going to succumb and react to someone's behavior or 
can you choose your response mm -hmm. and I suppose be the best version of yourself in that moment but it's a very difficult thing to do and I think what you said was great about your awareness of yourself that's the first point yeah. like some people are unco unconsciously yeah caught up in the emotion but well, then to I be aware is say, like you know people that have anger issues or whatever mm. that's like their go-to reactive emotion to things but they're not really angry I feel like they're hurt <coughs> and it yeah. triggers that in them and that's their response mm. so I think that like and as well I feel like me and my friend talked about this before but like the mental health services in Ireland aren't the best and if you look at like maybe your parents generation there was no such thing as getting help for your mental health. So all that stuff is internalised. I think that's why we have such a huge drinking culture as well. It's like yeah. people are just carrying around all this stuff that they don't know what to do with. Mm. Do you know? So I feel like people are reactive because they've never learned anything else. Like, mm, yeah, you know, it's okay yeah. to feel your emotions, especially men, I feel. Yeah. And it's great even to see that that change has occurred from one generation to another, that now there is much more help. I know it's not perfect, but... Mm -hmm. There's definitely more, know, yeah. Yeah. And there isn't such a, a taboo around it as, as there was, I suppose, in a way. Mm -hmm. What about you, Ash? Yeah. So I think for me, it means that recognising that we have all the emotions. Um, when you're being emotionally bulletproof, that could mean just saying that you need help with something. Or if you're really struggling, go and get the help that you need. Um, last night I was thinking that one of my friends is starting um, a new little venture where she is going to be helping people in an alternative way, an alternative therapy. And I just thought in my mind all the different alternative therapies that I've tried <laughs> um, from yeah. counselling, psychotherapy, reflexology, EFT, reconnective healing. And I thought, oh my God, I've, I've actually done so much. But yeah. it, it just helped me through all the times that I struggled. And being emotionally bulletproof, I think, is acknowledging how you feel and then finding a way to deal with it. Like, Brilliant. Yeah. That's so important because mm -hmm. you can know how you feel. But like, I'm very open about dealing with depression and stuff before. But I feel like there was a time where I was depressed and I was just so in it that I didn't really think about looking for help. I was just stuck in a cycle of feeling down mm. and depressed and anxious. Yeah. And then it was like, maybe sometimes you're not ready to go to therapy because mm -hmm. that's a really hard thing to do. Like, it's not yeah. easy to talk about all those things. But, you know, I go to therapy every week now and I think it's great. But it's just looking back at the difference of knowing that you're not, not feeling good, but just kind of sitting in it and not yeah. acting on, you know, yeah. feeling better. Yeah, there can be like a level of confusion with it mm -hmm. for a while, like mm -hmm. as well, like it's natural, I think. Mm -hmm. mm. That's brilliant. So we're going to talk more in the next parts of the series about like transforming your emotions, mm -hmm. how to get back up the scale and things like that. But if you have to summarize what we just chat about with the what is being emotionally bulletproof, mm -hmm. does anyone have a one sentence that you could share? Yeah, and it comes from our PMP positive prints. <laughs> Value yourself enough to acknowledge how you feel and do the thing to commit to, to commit to heal. Yeah. Mm. Mm, I think just being aware of your emotions. It sounds simple, yeah. but because for a long time I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I'd be walking around in a mood all day and I'd be affecting everyone else and being like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> and then it would hit me two days later that one thing that happened was annoying me so much. But because I used to push everything like yeah. to the back so I wouldn't have to think about it, it was, I was internalising it all. So for me, it's definitely having an awareness of how I'm feeling. Yeah. Thanks, ladies. Okay, cool. So just to summarise what you said, Ash, your one-liner is, Value yourself enough to acknowledge how you feel and commit to heal. It even rhymes. That's lovely. And then, Ava, you said awareness. Just simply be aware of your emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant. So, ladies, I know that none of us, I'm, I'm pretty sure, uh, had any ed education around emotions and what they are and how many there are in primary or secondary school. But since you became an adult, could you identify a couple of emotions? How many emotions do you think there are? I have no idea, but mm -hmm. I feel like when I think of emotions, I think of the, the main ones for me, which are the obvious ones, like happiness, sadness, anger. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like that's that would be what I would think of anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think um, somebody helped me to open my mind a bit on this a good few years ago. Like there are a lot of emotions, um, but ones that I loved that they mentioned was like awe and wonder. Like they're really positive ones, um, especially if you're out in nature when you're in a state of pure awe. I've no idea how many emotions there are, but there's some really beautiful ones. Mm-hmm. What makes me laugh about this is, you know, on Facebook, is it you can say Sarah Harty is feeling, and then you can choose from all the emotions. And I was like, I wonder are people getting their education from, from that now? <laughs> but um, I have different images. I've just seen graphs or scales mm-hmm. in my mind, and that's, I think, where my mind reads it from. Mm-hmm. But I read somewhere that there's at least 27 emotions, and I know... When I started reading books about this, I definitely only had two or three in my mind mm-hmm. at that time. I was thinking I couldn't describe my emotion or, you know, I'd always pinpointed to like anger or love or fear or yeah. hate or whatever it may be. So that leads us on to our last question, which is, do you know what the emotional scale is? And could you share with the audience? Yeah. So there's two emotional scales the first one that impacted me was from the book feel the fear and do it anyway and basically they're talking about like you know becoming empowered and if you're in a place of pain and how to move out of that so it was a really basic scale and it was on one side pain and on the other side power and then somewhere in the middle so every day you would look at the scale and you would say to yourself where am I like am I am I in a place of pain am I kind of moving more to a place of power am I feeling really empowered or it's just really good and simple to gauge where you're at like Mm. yeah I wouldn't have really had a clue but in my head I suppose a lot of emotions are like like you could link them into different like if you had to separate them, mm-hmm. you know, like love and happiness and joy and then you'd have yeah. hate or fear, you know. Yeah. I feel like you have the negative emotions and the positive mm-hmm. emotions. Not that any are wrong. They're just, they're just emotions. But yeah. Yeah. And I never would have even thought about it before. So it's like interesting to talk about because even when I'm sitting here, I'm like in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, that's another one. A shock. That's an emotion. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The shock tactics. I was like, there's only three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you sit and let them surface, then mm. it's very interesting. And then we've labeled them because I know some some words have negative and positive connotations depending on mm. how you feel about them or your experience of them in your life. Um, and that's there's no right or wrong with this anyway. Mm-hmm. For me, with the scale is the first thing to note is that there's up and down, high or low. Like there's two opposite sides. sides. Mm. So I always think that we definitely can identify where we are in a moment at some part of the scale and do we want to try and help ourselves go up or Mm. are we going to fall lower and what does that Mm -hmm. look like but what gave us a laugh actually about this scale from a lady we listened to called abraham hicks is in her scale the middle one is peace or contentment Mm -hmm. yeah so that's the middle of the scale like some people like yeah you're indifferent kind of yeah yeah and she would say, like, if you're having a bad day, just meditate, relax, whatever you can do to get back yeah, to a state yeah. of just pure peace, like mm-hmm. not to reach up high on the scale. But I was thinking I always have that middle mark in my mind mm-hmm. that peace is there in the middle or contentment, like, mm-hmm. you know, and I could go either side. Mm-hmm. So I think the scale is, is very helpful to realize that there's one there and then we have a range of emotions yeah and that's it really and I feel like as well like I wasn't sure if I'd say this but I feel like it's coming up naturally but when mm. I was a child like growing up we weren't really allowed to express how we were feeling and it's not like I just feel like as an adult now I know that my parents weren't emotionally mature enough themselves to deal with our emotions so I kind of grew up then pushing everything away and not thinking about things. And if something bothered me, I'd really like hang on to it. But, you know, I said like mm. I didn't know what I was feeling. I couldn't really figure it out. So I used to do this thing where I'd be like, oh, I can't have a bad day or if something upsets me, I just need to forget about it. And mm. now I'm in a headspace where if I'm having a bad day, I'm like, OK, I'm giving myself the next 24 hours. I'm going to wallow in it. This is only my own thing that I do. <laughs> I'm going to stick it's on Netflix. Though. 
and just yeah. have a total chill day. Mm. And if I need to be sad, I'll be sad. But then I'm not dragging it on to tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow I'm getting up and I'm being back to normal again. Yeah. Mm. So I think it's just like, that comes back to being aware of how you're feeling, yeah. you know? So I know it's like, oh, get out of the bad mood or whatever. But like some days it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> 100%. I used to love with mm. you like yeah. years ago when we lived together, you'd come home. I've never seen you in a bad mood. But you'd be like, right, I'm going for a run. And you'd run off the bad mood and you'd come back and you'd be lighter. Like, <laughs> That's brilliant. I can't even remember that, but I definitely yeah. do that. I just thought yeah. it was brilliant. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm very bad when I'm in a bad mood. I affect everyone around me. I'm like, <laughs> and, and I know, I know I do it, but I can't help myself. I'm like, Ava, do you want to come on a run with me? <laughs> That's great. I didn't even know that about myself. Mm. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. That's lovely, Cher. Thanks for that. Great. And there was one other thing we wanted you to share because it was oh, brilliant before we started yeah. this. It um, was about a book that you read. Yeah, so the, the talking about being emotionally bulletproof reminded me of a book that I started reading last summer called Becoming Emotionally Bulletproof by a woman called Ebby Pomporis, who was um, a Secret Service agent trained in the military, uh, was a police officer, was actually around during 9-11 when that happened. Um, I mean, in the middle of it happening. Mm -hmm. And she talks about how her training um, kind of shaped her to be able to read people and trust her gut instinct and how, you know, like your mental state can really save your life sometimes because when you're in a panic, it's hard to focus. Um, so it's just a really interesting book on how to become mentally stronger and uh, yeah, just definitely a good read. That's amazing. Thanks for sharing that. I don't know why I went completely silent there, but <laughs> <laughs> just to respect what you said, I think mm -hmm. I do that sometimes actually. I did start reading it on a plane mm -hmm. though and I was like, actually, do you know, I'm, actually, I'm not going to read this right now. Um, <laughs> maybe yeah. something a bit more lighthearted. <laughs> I'll save that. <laughs> reading about 9-11, I'm like, actually you know <laughs> never mind <laughs> oh fair play to you thanks for reading it and sharing it with us well great wisdom comes from sharing like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah super okay that was great so that's all from us today for from part one of our four-part series with Ava Hennessy on what it means to be emotionally bulletproof tune in next week for part two Thank you for tuning in to another episode of our Partners in Positivity podcast. It means the world to us that you've tuned in. We hope you put a smile in your face or made you laugh. Maybe you got a little bit of wisdom from this or hopefully you want to take an action in your life based on something positive you got from listening to our guest or listening to us. We absolutely, absolutely value the work that we do and we are going to continue to bring you more episodes week on week. If you don't know already, we do have a Kofi donation page and it is ko-fi.com forward slash partners and positivity, kofi.com. Feel free to donate and we are so grateful for anyone that has donated so far. Thanks, Sarah. And thanks to each and every one of you who tune in on audio and on YouTube to listen to us, to share all your good energy with us. And thanks for everything that you've done whether it's a like on Instagram, sharing the podcast, nice comment, a review, coming and meeting us in person on our PMP hikes. We just love it all and we are so grateful and we cherish and adore each and every one of you. Thanks so much.